Hey there everyone, Atesh here and this is a short video. All I want to do in this video is introduce you to the type aliases and give you a moment so that you can read some documentation on your own so that whenever you find out some tutorial who is talking about exactly same thing, you can say, yeah, this is coming up exactly from the documentation as well. And again, the whole idea behind making the short chunk size, bite size videos is so that if you feel you can consume more than one at a time instead of pushing out a 12 hours or 15 hours of content at a one given point of time. Again, let's get started with the type aliases. Now, type alias is a topic which is really, really simple and you don't have to worry about anything at all. I'll walk you through with the documentation as well. We've already gone through with some of the scenarios which where we can use it and this is all what you'll see. If you've watched the previous video, this one will just come like a breeze. So moving up here, we have saw that we can actually create a simple variable which is a user and we can kind of use that as well. But in the JavaScript, we don't actually create a variables just like this. If you want to support anything like that, we actually go with a different method. Let me, let me walk you through because coding is actually much easier when I show you uh, by writing the code itself. So let's just say our goal is still same. We are creating an application in which we onboard a user and user has some of the properties that we want to go through with that. And maybe this is not just a one function which uses all the set of properties, but there are like probably eight different functions which uses the same of properties. Now, what they do with that property is that's not our concern. Our idea is that whenever somebody takes a, this entirety of eight function, whenever they takes any parameter, they need to get all the information of the user itself. That's the whole idea. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that. The way how we do it, we create a type of it. And yes, it's a keyword in the TypeScript. And we simply go ahead and define a user like that. Really simple. It looks like almost like a constant, but this is a type alias that we go for. Now, once we have this user, we can define all the properties that we want to have, but we don't define the exact uh, value of it. We'd rather define what kind of value is going to come up into that. So for example, this one is going to be a simple string and not a comma. And let's just say email is also coming up. That is also a type of string and uh, is active is also there, which is going to be a Boolean value. So now uh, just assume there are more properties of it and we have actually created a type for it. Now the advantage of creating a type like this is, it could be really a long and lengthy one is, whenever there are methods like create user, uh, get user details, modify the user, we want all the information to be passed on. So let's go ahead and create a simple function like this. And once we have this one, this is the definition of it. Now what I want is if anybody pass me a user, it should adhere to the type of user. So I can go ahead and say, hey, this should be a type of user. So what we are doing internally is kind of creating the data types here or the types in the TypeScript. So just like we write something like a number, uh, maybe a number, or maybe we can go ahead and write a simple string. Similarly, now we are actually allowed to pass on user. Now, just a side tip, uh, yes, you can do something weird, things like this. And you'll see this in some example in tutorials, stuff like that, that, hey, you can call the string and that string could be a uh, you can type alias a string as, um, uh, not string actually, my string as a string. So wherever you are using now the string type, you can go ahead and actually say my string. Again, I don't know why there are so many examples about that on internet. I, I find it weird, but yeah, it is actually technically allowed. So, but I won't see a really use case of that, that why would you rename the defin default string or Boolean or something like that? Maybe there is a case where entirety of a team don't use Boolean word and just use the bool. Maybe you want to do that, but again, there are use cases for that. So now we can see that there is a user and there is a user, we are not returning anything. So anytime somebody uses a create user, he just goes ahead and say, I want to use user. He will be complained that, hey, there is something that you need to pass on one argument that should be of type user. So in this case, I cannot just go ahead and say, hey, this is my object. It will complain. It doesn't uh, match the type of user. So you have to give me all the name, email and is active. So let's just say I give it a name. Uh, the name is going to be an empty string. Then it says, hey, it is an email, which is also going to be an empty string. And then it says, hey, give me is active as well, uh, which could be true or false. If I pass on all the values, it is absolutely happy. Now, similar to this, we can also say that, hey, whenever you create this function, you obviously should return something and that return type of value should also be user. So you get the idea how this is going ahead further that anybody who uses this function, uh, this function needs to return that. So you have to go ahead and say, hey, return. And then you have to not only return the object, you have to actually return all these values. So whatever that values are and whatever your logic says, 
You have to return that, otherwise it will complain. So it's a really good use case of how the type can be used. Now, in the real world scenario, whenever let's just say we, we are creating a user for our LMS, then obviously this is not it. Uh, there are a lot of things that you have to pass on. Now, what you do with those things, totally up to you, your logic, but this is a common thing which is being used. Now, let me walk you through with the documentation as well, uh, because documentation obviously always helps to understand this. So into the everyday types, if you look for it uh, here on the left hand side, there are type aliases in the interface. Yes, they are quite confusing, almost like same to each other. Uh, but this is the example that are given in the documentation about type aliases. So it's common that we want to use same types more than once. Just I told you, maybe there are eight functions, eight functions which are using the same type of user. Maybe there are 15 values in the object or the user. So in that case, it can be really, really useful. Uh, all the internet is filled up with these kinds of examples where somebody is trying to create coordinates. Great example, nothing wrong in that. So he's creating a type of point and whenever somebody a point is defining, you have to pass on X and Y coordinate. Same example, uh, let's just say we are sending print coordinate, you have to provide PT, which is of type point. So it is compulsory whenever somebody is using print coordinate, he has to pass on all these values. And we don't have to again and again uh, make our function definition too lengthy that, hey, you have to pass on this uh, eight different lines. So imagine uh, if this would be point instead of the coordinate into two values, it could be, uh, let's just say 16 values. And in your function, what could definition would be look like here? Really crazy. So it's better that in one file, we define all these types when then we import them. And whenever the function definition comes up, we just call them, hey, you need to pass on a value which should be a point type or maybe a user type or maybe something else. So uh, there are a lot of values. And yes, we haven't yet studied about these or types or a union type and all of that. We will do that very soon. I highly recommend you at least go ahead and go through with reading this. This won't be taking more than two to three minutes to you but you will develop a habit of reading the documentation. So I think the type LS is all done now. Let's go ahead and move on to next video. Some quirky behaviors and some real small topics are there. I would like to cover them up in the next video. Let's catch up there.